and uh <laughs> What's up guys, Tom Davis here, America's Canon Educator. I just got a text message from one of the girls back at work that they're having a real hard time getting this dog out of the crate or out of the kennel because of resource guarding issues. They're not comfortable with it. This particular board and train came in for resource guarding issues. So I'm firing up the truck, loading the dogs back up, going back to the facility, and I want to bring you guys and walk you through the process and how I'm going to deal with this. All right guys, so obviously I just got to the facility, so um, he's eaten most of his dinner, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of food in the kibble dish, just so I can show you guys, I think it's gonna be a good video, how to deactivate this type of uh, resource guarding, why it happens, and really just go through the process from start to finish so you guys know what it is and how to deal with it, hopefully, and we'll go from there. So what I did guys, I just moved one of our other boarding, boarding train dogs just because it's, I don't want to cause too much stress. So now I'm just going to walk you through the process, but when I go back out there, he's probably going to bark at me. So I just want to go over like resource guarding if you're not familiar with it. Basically what happens is, is dogs um, will resource guard things, which means it could be anything that is of resource to the dog. It could be food, it could be a human, it could be a toy, it could be a sock, anything that they feel like is theirs that they can they can possess and they feel like it's a resource that they may not get again. Some dogs develop this over years with being picked on as a young, it, there's so many different reasons why it can happen. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna walk everyone through like what I would do during this situation normally. In that state of mind when he's that protective, the problem with this particular dog is he does that to other people about his owners. So his owners become his resource and he'll do that to other people. And obviously you see that that's very severe. So that's something that we, we're gonna try to stop as, as much as we can. Let's see what, see what happens. So obviously he's not backing down. First thing I'm gonna do is give him spatial pressure. So what this will allow me to do is I'm gonna basically find something I can stick in his kennel. And I wanna, I wanna gauge how serious he is I'm not gonna poke him with anything, so don't freak out. Some people are weird like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put something in there to see if he'll bite it. A lot of times what happens in these cases is a dog is reactive because of the fence. And if I go into his zone, just by sticking this into his crate without even touching him, he'll probably de-escalate just a little bit. Touching him with this, guys. Just to de No joke. See how he's, he's all about me. It's not about this. I'm just gauging to see where he's at mentally. Um, and I'm gonna continue to just problem solve. Good 
W. No. And, uh... All right, now the work begins. Like I said, once I get him out, see that's the thing is he's possessing this. You notice how quiet he got once I broke through? It, it's, that's what possession aggression, aggression is. And it can get this bad, where if they can hold anything of value, including this threshold for no apparent reason, they will back everything up. And that's what he's doing is he's possessing, every, that's why he's here. So, whew, that was a workout. But now that I'm in, I'll be able to get him out and um, I don't, he cannot get away with that stuff. I mean, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out a way to get in safely. But the thing is, is like he's getting away with it so much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the technology that we have here at the facility and use a dog tread 280C. And what I'm gonna do, my plan is, he's still looking at me. My plan is, is to get the 280C out and uh, I'm gonna use the sound box so you guys know what I'm using. And all I'm gonna be using is the vibrate function on it. So my goal is, is when he comes at me, when I'm back here, I have the ability to give, good boy, good boy. Yeah, you, he's giving me the lip still. I'll have the ability to give him some sort of consequence for doing that because at that point, it was very, he won that entire war right there. So now, I, well, he won the battle, I'll win the war. So. For those of you who don't know, this is a catch pole, so it just makes a situation like this easy. So he can't get to me unless I want him to get to me at this point. So it's just a safe thing to use. I used to use it a lot when I was an animal control officer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring him up front. So now I'm just gonna transition uh, to a slip and then I'll transition to some an e-collar and I'm just gonna use technology to help with the situation. So I just want to show you what the dog tread is. So this is the dog tread 280C. Uh, it's one of their compact units. It's very, very small, but the vibrate is like really intense. Um, and then I also have the dog tread sound box. So every time I hit the vibrate, you guys are going to be able to tell through the sound box that's going to make some noise in the back. It's getting late. Been here since five o'clock or 5.30 this morning, but uh, just walk you through the process here. Um, so we have his food out, which he's going to get fired up about. This is the dog tread box. So when I hit the vibrate, which is the pager on the front of the 280C, it's just gonna vibrate to him. The vibrates uh, probably three times more like this than a cell phone, so it's, uh, it's pretty intense. But again, I need to be able to correct him for that behavior. It's not gonna go away by any means if you just ignore it and let him win like that. Um, and he's only nine months old, so he's gotten away with it for a bit. And uh, it's something that um, not a lot of people would probably have the patience or um, stupidity to maybe, or whatever, to work with them. So here we go. Leave it. There, that was it, guys. So just that correction. And again, it's technology. There's no reason why we should be afraid of using stuff like this if we're using it to save a dog's life like this, where it's, you know, the, the, in, a, in a shelter, there's no way this dog would have lasted because they're not gonna, nobody's gonna touch that through that. <laughs> Good. Good job. So he's thinking about it. So food is his absolute biggest trigger. So um, we're gonna take this a step further and get out one of his treats. So, I mean, it might be that simple. Um, honestly, I didn't think it was gonna, be that fast of a transition, but um, just one correction if you guys heard. Good boy. Good job. And like I said, guys, this dog was so possessive of just this 
kennel. And, and now I'm going in with his food and feeding him. In the kennel, he just tried to kill me for trying to get into. So what I'm gonna do is do a second test, which is having him possess the, there it is, good. Leave it. Pager. It's on zero, you guys can see that. Taylor. Good, so I'm not changing, there's no, no shock here, ladies and gentlemen. Just a beautiful pager that discourages from doing that crap. I have no leverage, as you guys saw before. He's winning all of that. I don't want to get bit. I have to go in there like some sort of Spartan with a shield and a trident uh, to get him out. And now, I can just use technology. I, it, it blows my mind why people wouldn't trust to use technology to advance their communication with their dog. Good. And you guys would tell if I was doing anything else because that would be making noise. The only time that that makes noise is when I hit the pager. So uh, this would be operant conditioning, guys. 10 minutes ago, he wanted to eat me through the kennel. Good, hey, hey, sit, sit. God boy, good job, mate. So a lot of voice inflection there, guys, just telling him, whoa, 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 because I'm able to discourage the behavior from happening and allowing him to build and get more possessive. Because if you saw in the beginning, see, he's stressed about this, and he should be because this is ridiculous. But you saw in the beginning, he, um, he got so worked up, it was just habitual. It's like a little kid that never stops crying. They just work themselves up into a, a tizzy. So, so anyway, guys, this is like the first step on how to, how to deal with resource guarding. Obviously, I had to get him out to use. I, I would prefer to use technology to get over this a lot quicker um, because we don't have, I mean, this dog is only with us for two weeks or so, and we don't have a lot of time to mess around and sit in there and give him cakes through the, like, we have to be very assertive. And for me, it's the same thing, like, I'm not a, a parent, but I mean, it's the same thing with me for like, a, like parenting. I'm not gonna avoid a situation that's deadly. I'm not gonna let a kid sit there and kick and scream and shoot guns in the air and like do whatever they wanna do at nine months old because in the future, I'm allowing what I love, which is dogs, to fold into something that is gonna be you know, problematic and end up probably in the system because I just continue to let them do what they want at this age. So there's no way I'm gonna let a dog get away with that. Be not because I don't want him to do that to me, that's besides the point. The point is, is I care enough about dogs to let them know really clearly that that's not okay, it's unacceptable. And at some point, that type of behavior, if he ended up in a shelter, there's no way anybody would have touched him with that, with that resource guardian, no way. So for me, it's really important to understand that people utilize remotes in every way you possibly can as a creator uh, with because for me dog training is a form of art I don't think that there's like book by book by book tradition by tradition tradition this is how you do it and I think if the dog is getting better and you're humane of course I don't think that there's anything off limits for you to try to get creative to do uh, for an example get a crate pan a catch pole and a broom and a, and a remote collar to try to teach a dog that possession is, possession is not that fun and it hurts me to see other professionals in the industry tell people what they can and can't do with the remote collar because this is just uh, this is just a, a brush for a dog trainer. This is you can get as creative as you want with the tools you have, as long as it benefits the dog. And and for me, I can't stress that enough. I've seen I've seen so many people like this is how you do this is not how you use it. This so anyway, guys. So I just wanted to show you a couple different ways and how you can not only just work with possession stuff but get creative like as a, like I said as a dog trainer and working with animals there's so much you can do to help them get better you don't need all this clinical stuff and that's what dogs need is is somebody to you know use them as a canvas and get creative and try to get them better but anyway uh, all right guys back home thank you so much for watching me today I appreciate everybody that I worked with today on my online facility um, from Sweden, Australia, and a bunch of people from the United States. So it's been a long day. I'm going to go in and get some rest. I hope this video was insightful. I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope it was entertaining. I appreciate every single one of you for watching. And I would also appreciate it if you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel for videos like this all the time. And I'm going to get some bed. But I'm going to get some bed. Ooh, I'm going to get some sleep. Bye, guys. Wandering around in a blurry time. In a foggy state.